This is Ken Rogers with Channel 6 News. This is the 6th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, and we bring you the touching story of Abdul Rahman Zaitou, a Muslim man who took his chances and tried to ride out Hurricane Katrina while his wife and kids went to Baton Rouge before the storm. After the storm, every day at noon, he called his wife to tell her he was okay and that he loved her. The whole city was flooded at this time, but Zaitoun was able to help others because of the aluminum canoe he had in his garage. Oh. Help! I'm over here! Help! Oh, thanks, sir. I really need this. You're quite welcome. Yeah. I've saved a couple of people already today. Yeah, I've been staying on time for quite a while. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. This storm has taken a toll on all of us. Yeah. My name's Jeff, yeah? My friends call me Zytown. You're welcome. In times like these, people need all the help they can get. Yeah. Thanks again. See you later. Zytown owned many properties under his company name, Zytown Painting Contractors, and spent his time checking the houses for when their tenants came back to live in them. When Zaitan checked his houses, he would look for food and supplies to get him through the disaster. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? What are you doing? You better think of a story pretty damn quick. Sir, you gotta believe me, I own Zaitan Painting and Contractors. I own this property and I was checking on the house. Ab Abdul Rahman? Ab Abdul Rahman, yes. That's my name. Uh-huh. Okay. They're coming downtown. Wait, sir, please. I gotta call my wife. No! Shut up! What did I do? What did I try? You just get in here with the other Al-Qaeda dogs! Wait, I need to call my wife. Don't I get a phone call? Zaytan's arrest was not standard for several reasons. He was denied a phone call, he was not read his rights, and he was given food that he could not eat. Namely, pork, which Muslims are forbidden to eat. Here's your food. Sir, I can't eat this. My religion forbids me to eat pork. I know. Well, can I at least call my wife? Let me get a phone call? No, you don't. Well, why not? Because I said so! <laughs> Meanwhile, Zaytan's wife, Kathy, is back in Baton Rouge with her family and kids, worrying about her husband every day because he has not called her like he used to do every day. You, you can take off that fancy head deal now. You're with your family. He's not here to make decisions for you. You can take it off. How many times do I have to tell you? I converted to Islam by my own choice. Abdul Rahman had nothing to do with this. And it just breaks my little old heart that you won't accept me for who I am. Back in New Orleans, Zaytown has been put on trial to set his bail. All rise for the Honorable Judge Jeff. Be seated. <coughs> order in the court! Order in the court! Now, that's a normal bail of a person in Zytoon's position is $500. Let's start the bail at, I don't know, $150,000. Any arguments? Sir, that is way too high. My client, Zytoon, should only have to pay $35,000. I think it needs to be a little higher. I mean, he is a terrorist after all. Maybe $75,000? Well, if you put it that way, it does seem fair. What? I'm not a terrorist. That's not fair. No. This court finds that the bail set for Zytown should be $75,000 on account of stolen property. Can I at least get my phone call? No, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Well, why should you even set a bail if nobody's going to know I'm in prison? Well, what a touching story. And here we are with the man himself and his wife, Abdurman Zaytown and Kathy. Hi, Ken. Nice to be here. Yes, indeed. Nice to see you. Hello. So tell us, Zaytown, 
What were some of the major troubles they had in your, during your experience? Well, the jail was awful and extremely uncomfortable. I would have to say that the hardest aspect of it was the amount of racism I had to deal with. Simply based on my appearance, people assumed that I was a radical terrorist or somehow affiliated with Al-Qaeda. I had to endure prejudice and mistreatment at every turn, even before the hurricane hit. Oftentimes, our clients object to having my workers in their house because of their ethnicity. And my wife, too, has dealt with such injustice. Really? What exactly are we talking about here? Can you explain? Well, teenagers made a game out of snatching my hijab, my headscarf, off of my head. As a matter of fact, I uh, converted to Islam after a particularly unpleasant experience at the evangelical church I was a parishioner at. A few years back, I ran into a preacher from the church and told him that I was uncertain about my faith and considering converting to Islam. He told me to come to Mass the next Sunday, expecting him to my, renew my faith. However, I was sorely mistaken. The preacher had me step in front of the whole congregation and tell me my story. After we she said with a sneer, she was looking to Islam. She was considering the worship of Allah. I was appalled that a holy man did not even know that Allah and God were one and the same. I honestly wanted no part in an institution that was so ignorant of other walks of life. So I converted to Islam the very next day. That was a very touching story, Kathy. Now, does either of you two have any stories to share? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. Excuse uh, me. Well, Ken, at West Jefferson High School, a 10th grader of Iraqi descent had been repeatedly harassed by her history teacher. He called Iraq a third world country and had worried that the student would bomb us if she ever returned to Iraq. In February of that year, while passing out tests, the teacher had pulled back the girl's hijab and said, I hope God punishes you. No, I'm sorry, I hope Allah punishes you. The incident was widely reported, and the student filed a lawsuit against him, and his termination was recommended by the Jefferson Parish School District, but the school board had overruled, and he was given a few weeks suspension and returned to the classroom. Uh, that's terrible. I mean, that guy should have been out of there for... Appalling. Well, I have Jeweler Mind Zytown story. Read Zytown by Dave Eggers, winner of the American Book Award. Thanks for coming, Zytown. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kent. Yes, this concludes our broadcast. Join us next week when we review another book by Dave Eggers, What is the What?